European Union, and the European Union is stronger for having the United Kingdom and Scotland as part of it. Thank you. Thank you. That ends the debate on the EU referendum. The next item of business is a statement by Aileen MacLeod on the publication of the 2013 Greenhouse Gas Inventory. The Minister will take questions at the end of her statement and there should therefore be no interventions or interruptions. I note that a number of people are not in their places. They are now. I now call on Aileen MacLeod, Minister, 10 minutes. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. This is a milestone year for climate change with a new global treaty to be negotiated in Paris in December. And those negotiations will seek a legally binding and universal agreement on climate change. Now, that treaty must form the foundation for a truly effective international response to climate change, limiting global temperature rise to no more than two degrees Celsius and protecting the poorest and most vulnerable from the worst extremes of climate change. Now, Scotland has world-leading ambition on climate change and we are calling on other countries to match that ambition. In that context, presiding officer, I want to update the Chamber on the publication earlier this morning of the latest statistics on the Scottish greenhouse gas emissions and the progress being made. Now, the statistics show that Scotland's source emissions, that is greenhouse gas emissions from sources in Scotland in 2013 were 34.3% lower than the 1990 baseline, a third lower. And further, on the wider emissions measure recorded in the net Scottish emissions account, which takes account of the EU emissions trading, the 2013 level, presenting officer, was 38.4% lower than the 1990 baseline. Now, these data demonstrate that Scotland is now more than three quarters of the way to our 42% reduction target by 2020. And let me underline that point, presenting officer, because Scotland is on track to meet our 42% target uh, by 2020, if not before. And these figures demonstrate that Scotland is making significant progress in making the low carbon economy a reality. You know, Scotland, Germany, Denmark, the US and China all have fast growing low carbon sectors. And Scotland is at the centre of a new strong story about low carbon driving a renewal of the global economy, delivering jobs, growth, regeneration, energy security, the circular economy, climate resilience, social justice, climate justice and tackling poverty. Now we know that we have to underpin this ambition with domestic action and progress against the annual targets set in legislation is very important. Now changes to the methodology for calculating emissions have added 10.6 megatons to the 1990 baseline from when the fixed targets were set, making it harder to meet those fixed targets. But despite that, the net Scottish emissions account in 2013 was 49.7 megatons compared to the target of 47.9 megatons, a gap of less than 4%. Now, if it had not been presenting officer for successive increases to the baseline since the targets were established, Scotland would have met and exceeded our target for this year and the three previous years also. So we have made very significant progress, but like all other countries, we must continue to lift the pace of our actions year on year. And achieving our targets is clearly not easy. You know, it's not something that government can do on its own, and it requires support from right across society. And that was why I was, you know, very appreciative of the strong cross-party support and from the public for action on climate change expressed at the Stop Climate Chaos Scotland rally at the Parliament on the 27th of May. And I hope very much, presenting officer, that we can continue to maintain that consensus in the important period ahead. Now, last year, we announced new actions that government would take, and these are being delivered. The Cabinet Subcommittee on Climate Change is ensuring coordination of our response at the highest level within government and the ambition of the subcommittee and of cabinet overall on this agenda is resolute. So I'm very pleased that ministers collectively 
are determined that we place appropriate priority on climate change and the Cabinet have agreed to embed climate change in this autumn's budget process. I'm pleased to announce further action across government that will reduce our emissions. Now, Scotland's homes presenting officer, they account for a quarter of our emissions. So energy efficiency is key to meeting our targets and we are making good progress. Since 2008, nearly one in three households have installed energy efficiency measures and over a third of Scotland's homes have a good energy efficiency rating, an increase of 56% since 2010. We have increased investment in domestic energy efficiency from £94 million last year to £119 million this year. And since 2009, we have allocated over half a billion pounds to fuel poverty and energy efficiency programmes. Now, heat accounts for approximately half of our emissions and over 55% of our energy demand. We spend £2.6 billion annually heating and cooling our homes and businesses. So this week, we are publishing our heat policy statement, placing energy demand reduction and reducing the need for heat at the top of our hierarchy of actions. It provides a framework for largely decarbonising our heat system by 2050, diversifying sources of heat, reducing pressure on energy bills and seizing economic opportunities. And we will now go further to realise the full potential of carbon saving from energy efficiency and drive down energy costs. Now, Scotland's new energy efficiency programme will provide an offer of support to all buildings in Scotland, both domestic and non-domestic, to improve their energy efficiency. And this will be the cornerstone of action to designate energy efficiency as a national infrastructure priority. And further detail will be set out in the infrastructure investment plan later this year. So our approach to energy is central to the challenge of reducing emissions and energy efficiency must be at the heart of the approach that we will take to decarbonising our energy system. We will work together with energy experts, businesses and communities to develop a more holistic approach to these issues over the next year as we prepare for the third report on proposals and policies in 2016. Now, the Scottish Government has consistently sought opportunities to provide additional investment in sustainable and active travel. And I have agreed with the Deputy First Minister that we will carry this commitment into the next Parliament. And as part of this, we will launch a second future transport fund. We will review the programmes to ensure they are effectively targeted to reduce transport emissions, improve air quality and promote active lifestyles, including exploring how we might support the concept of exemplar travel settlements and how to refocus and enhance our support for low-carbon buses, including scrappage of the oldest, most polluting vehicles from the bus fleet. And we will set out further detail in the budget this autumn. Now, the school run planning officer is a significant cause of congestion, localised air pollution, and it contributes to inactive lifestyles. So we will investigate school transport choices and what influences these, map existing activity, assess what is most cost effective, and advise where efforts would best be concentrated. And this will lead to a relaunch of an integrated policy on tackling the school run. We will also start work with the local authority to develop a low emission zone. We will discuss with local authorities where a pathfinder would most usefully be undertaken. Initially, we will support transport modelling, understanding the pressures on air quality and emissions. And this will allow the development of a low emission zone, both in terms of how the zone operates and how travel needs can be supported. Now, methane planning officer is a potent greenhouse gas. We will build on successful pilot projects to roll out the retrofit of landfill gas capture at older sites. And a further £500,000 will be invested this year to tackle the legacy of past waste management practices. We have an ambition for every household in Scotland to have access to a food waste collection and to accelerate the action already underway across Scotland to divert food waste from landfill, we will provide an additional £5 million over two years to help those local authorities who have yet to roll out food waste collections. 
We will also shortly publish work on the carbon impacts of a more circular economy, one of the first attempts anywhere in the world to quantify these benefits. And if we get smarter about how we manage materials, the carbon savings could be significant. The importance of peatland has been recognised in two recent debates, and through the Scottish National Heritage-led Peatland Action Initiative, 5,580 hectares were restored last year. Now, £10 million is already available through the Scottish Rural Development Programme, and I'm pleased to announce a further £3 million to support peatland restoration this year. And the Scottish Government and Scottish National Heritage will shortly publish our peatland plan, a strategic approach to managing, protecting and, where required, restoring Scotland's peatland. We had previously announced measures to tackle agricultural emissions from permanent pasture through the Common Agricultural Policy Greening, and we will go further than this and introduce a requirement for compulsory soil testing on all improved land. In addition, we will also be working with stakeholders to take increased action on livestock, health and production diseases in order to reduce the intensity of emissions from the sector. Signing officer, we started work on the next report on proposals and policies, RPP3, last October. We are developing a new model that will help us better understand the opportunities and the challenges we face. Reducing emissions can only be based on action by all of us and not just the government if we are to meet our ambitions. Therefore, I am clear that we will engage widely within Scotland and with the UK government and the European Union as we develop RPP3 over the coming months. Presenting officer, we are making good progress, but of course more needs to be done. In this milestone year for our environment, Scotland is acting locally and it can help show the way globally. We are calling on other countries to match Scotland's ambition, to boost the global economy through low carbon and to protect the poor and the vulnerable here and abroad from the worst impacts of climate change. That ends the statement from the Minister, who will now take questions raised on the issues in her statement. I intend to allow until 4.58 uh, for questions, and then we need to move on. It would be helpful if members who wish to ask a question could press the request to speak button now. And I call Sarah Boyd. Ms Boyd. Presiding officer. The advanced copy of the Minister's statement um, and note that the change of timing enabled rural committee members to return from Parliament Day in Orkney to hear the statement, although I do note that I heard the headline announcement from press in advance of the statement today. Will the Minister firstly confirm that the SNP Government has missed its fourth annual target in a row? Given that the revised 1990 baseline reveals that there was a higher level of dangerous climate emissions, will she confirm that she has no intention of watering down the targets, which would send a dreadful message ahead of the Paris talks? And does the Minister understand our disappointment at the lack of new proposals, the lack of details on new funding for the transformation we urgently need in our building stock, given the level of fuel poverty a third of our households live with day to day? And does she understand our disappointment that there's been an increase in business and industrial processes emissions? And will the Minister accept that the challenge is not whether there is a consensus was in this chamber for radical action, but the challenge is what the Scottish Government is actually going to do in its budget and in its RPP to deliver the radical transformation that Scotland needs to meet our targets? Minister. Well, can I say to uh, the member that we have put in place a comprehensive package of policies and measures to meet our emission reduction targets. I've already just set out in my statement exactly what we are prepared to do in terms of our further action that we are prepared to take to undertake and ensure that we actually meet our emission reduction targets. I think it's also fair to point out that while, yes, I am, to be honest, I am disappointed about missing our fourth annual target, but I think it's very important to put on record that what we have achieved in terms of that long-term target. Now, we are more than at three quarters of the way towards achieving our 42% emissions reduction target, as I set out in my statement. That is amazing progress that has been made by this government, by the Parliament, by the people of Scotland, by businesses and industries right across uh, Scotland. Now, the reason why we were having a challenge in facing our annual emission targets is simply because you know, the, the data on which our targets are based on, you know, they have improved, 
when we have, we have the successive changes that have been made to the data on which our targets are established, you know, have moved on, and we are making substantial progress towards achieving our 42% <clears throat> target. And we have set out this afternoon the further action that we are prepared to take, which I think is extremely substantial, especially in terms of our energy efficiency now being designated as a national infrastructure priority. Jimmy McGregor. Uh, thank you. Um, I thank the Minister for early sight of this statement, but I do share the disappointment and concern that for four years running now, the Scottish Government has failed to meet its targets, and the cumulative impact of this means we will all have to work even harder as we go forward. Um, we support the extra measures on making all homes more energy efficient and boosting insulation, which we've asked for continually. Can the Minister indicate what the extra spending commitment is in terms of today's new energy efficiency programme, and how will the government ensure the new measures reach the homes of difficult to reach groups like the very elderly or severely disabled who might need help in assessing these schemes? Also, on food waste, how will the government support the most rural and island local authorities where a food waste collection system is more difficult due to having disparate settlements and smaller economies of scale? Thank you. Minister. Well, in terms of our energy efficiency programme, you know, the cornerstone of a national infrastructure priority is our Scotland's energy efficiency programme. We have said we will develop this programme over the next two to three years in conjunction with our stakeholders. It will, for the first time, it will bring together action on the domestic and non-domestic sectors. And this programme, this new programme, it has the potential to transform the energy efficiency of Scotland's housing stock. You know, it will provide an offer of support to all buildings in Scotland to help them achieve a good energy efficient rating of over a 15 to 20 year period. And also the new powers that are due to be devolved to this Parliament in Scotland Bill to determine how supplier obligations in relation to energy efficiency and fuel poverty operate as they are due to be devolved. Now that gives us the scope to be able to tailor our new programme to Scotland's unique circumstances. And for example, it will help to ensure that we effectively target support at remote, rural and island communities which have not been adequately served by the UK's existing energy company obligation and equally it will give us a scope to design programmes to address the unique nature of Scotland's built environment. For example, a lot of our hard to heat uh, housing which we find in many of our rural areas with solid walls or within historic conservation areas and we said that we will work with stakeholders over the next two to three years to develop and design that programme and we'll be setting out further information in due course. Thank you. Can I advise members that I have 30 members who wish to ask a question of the Minister. I have less than 15 minutes to allow that to happen. So can you keep it to one question, keep it brief, and Minister, I'd be grateful for brevity too. Rob Gibson, followed by Claudia Beamish. Uh, thank you, President Officer. I welcome this positive programme. Uh, can the Minister confirm that the high percentage reduction in greenhouse gases uh, emissions from uh, 2012 to 2013 is not just methodological? And can she say what specific actions the Scottish Government has taken to achieve such a high percentage reduction? Minister. Well, it is clear that the introduction of a tighter EU emissions trading scheme cap is a result of the introduction of phase three of the uh, emissions trading scheme that had had a significant impact on emissions and this impact was reflected in the report on proposals and policies. However, what's important and what we're focused on is delivering the sustainable long-term emission reductions that were required by the Climate Change Act and going forward we expect emissions to continue to decline due to policies that are being put in place uh, by the Scottish Government. Now, progress towards Scotland's climate change targets is measured against the net Scottish emissions emissions account and this account incorporates the greenhouse gas emissions from sources in Scotland, our share of emissions from the international uh, aviation and international uh, shipping as well and it takes into account the use of emission allowances by Scottish industries and airlines participating in the EU emission trading system and when the 2013 emissions are adjusted to take account of the above, the net Scottish emissions account shows a decrease of 14 per cent between 2012 and 2013. Claudia Beamish, followed by Graeme Day. 
thank you, Presiding Officer. With emissions from agriculture still accounting for 23.4% of total, total emissions, with a cut of only 1.1%, can I ask the Minister if she is confident that the range of right measures are in place to reduce the range of emissions from this sector? And while recognising the demonstration value of the climate focus farms, there are only eight of these. Does the Minister now agree that the time may have come to expect a simple mandatory carbon reporting process for all farms to be consulted on? Minister. There are actually carbon audits that are built into the Scottish Rural Development Programme, but following the success of the Farming for a Better Climate, additional funding of £100,000 has been allocated in 2014-15 to increase the number of focus farms from four to eight to allow greater coverage and enable more farmers to attend uh, demonstration. And of course, the Agriculture and Climate Change uh, Stakeholder Group is further strengthening industry initiatives to promote the uptake of emission reduction measures. Graham Day, followed by Jim Hume. Uh, thank you. Supported by the Green Bus Fund, Stagecoach East Scotland has just introduced 18 new hybrid buses on the Arbro Dundee route in my constituency and has plans to replace the fleet serving the inland Kerrymuir Dundee service next year. So I absolutely welcome the commitment the Minister has given to enhancing existing support for low carbon buses in the next Parliament. However, I wonder if she could indicate how the Government will actively encourage increased participation in the scheme and whether she believes sufficient funding will be available to meet anticipated demand. Minister. Uh, officer, since its launch in 2010, uh, five rounds of the Scottish Green Bus Fund have provided £13 million to support the introduction of 269 new low-carbon vehicles, mostly hybrids, into the Scottish bus fleet. Now, that fund is complemented by the Bus Service Operators Grant, which currently pays double the standard rate of grant for services operated by low-carbon vehicles, and we are currently reviewing future options for supporting green buses in the light of technological and market developments and the increasing importance of air quality in order to maximise value for money and impact. Jim Hume, followed by Roderick Campbell. Yes, thank you. I am disappointed the Minister chose to release the figures to the press rather than to the Parliament, but no matter. In the last three years, not one single, bu one single building on the Scottish Government's 79 building estate has seen an improvement on its energy performance certificate. Indeed, only two buildings have renewable energy sources. Can the Minister explain how her department will rectify this and set an ethical example for renewables in our public sector? Minister. Uh, presiding officer, I didn't quite catch all of what um, Mr Hume said, but I will put on the record that the statistics that were published this morning, they were published, they are official statistics, uh, and they were published uh, online. <laughs> they are official statistics and they are independent of the government. Uh, in terms of what um, I think uh, Mr Hume was asking me, in terms of the cornerstone of the national infrastructure priority, which I set out earlier in terms of the Scotland's energy efficiency programme, I have said that that programme has a potential to transform the energy efficiency of Scotland's housing stock, and it will provide uh, an offer of support to all buildings in Scotland to help them achieve a good energy efficiency rating over that 15 to 20 year period. And that programme will provide the support to overcome the upfront costs of installing energy efficiency measures. And as I said earlier, we will work with stakeholders over the next two to three years to develop and design that programme. And we will be setting out further detailed information in due course. Roger Campbell, followed by Lewis MacDonald. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, while it's very disappointing the annual target has been missed, how does Scotland compare to the rest of Europe at the present time? Minister. Uh, for progress against the emission targets, Scotland and in terms of our UK, we use slightly different definitions. For direct comparisons with the UK, it is advisable to use the source emissions, including international aviation and shipping. Now, on this basis, Scotland's emissions have decreased by 3.6% between 2012 and 2013, compared with 2.3% for the UK as a whole. Now, between uh, 1990 and 2013, there was a 34.3% reduction in emissions in Scotland compared with 27.4% reduction for the UK as a whole. In terms 
of uh, Mr Campbell's question around the EU data. Is, unfortunately, we don't have comparison data for EU countries at this time because the comparable figures have not been released yet by the European Environment Agency and we look forward to receiving them because in terms of our emission reduction targets between 1990 and 2012, the EU average was 18.5% and Scotland was 29.9% from 2012. So we are outperforming not only the UK but we're also outperforming the EU average as well. Lewis MacDonald, followed by Angus MacDonald. Thank you, President Officer. I'm sorry I missed the very beginning of the Minister's statement, but I did hear a promise to make an offer of support to all buildings in Scotland uh, on energy efficiency. Then she talked about consulting yes, on that over the next two to three years. Can she tell us how much new money the Scottish Government intends to invest in this objective over the next 12 months, given that it does not want to miss the targets again in 2016? Minister. Well, the new programme will include uh, multi-year funding that will give our delivery partners the certainty that they need to deliver the ambitious energy efficiency projects. And as I said earlier, the detail of the programme itself, it still needs to be developed and we will be working with stakeholders you know, over the next couple of years before launching uh, the new programme. Angus MacDonald, followed by Patrick Harvey. I welcome the stats showing that Scotland's source emissions are over a third lower than the 1990 baseline. Uh, to help improve on that, what is the Minister doing to support economically challenged communities and households in Scotland to tackle emissions and fuel poverty and, in the process, have a better quality of life? Minister. Uh, we have already allocated over half a billion pounds since 2009 on a raft of fuel poverty and energy efficiency programmes. Now, nearly one in three of our households, uh, over 700,000, have now received energy efficiency support. So tackling fuel poverty remains a priority for this government and for this year we are spending unprecedented amounts on fuel poverty and energy efficiency with a record budget of £119 million for 2015-16. You know, our uh, HEAP schemes are also supporting those most in need. And for example, £48 million of the £65 million available for HEAP's area-based schemes in the current year is allocated on the basis of need, which takes into account levels of fuel poverty and it reflects the different types of properties within rural areas. So our spending on domestic energy efficiency has already made hundreds of thousands of homes warmer and cheaper to heat. And as the Scottish House Condition Survey shows, it has helped to mitigate the rise in fuel poverty. Patrick Harvey, followed by David Stewart. The re-announcement of the National Infrastructure Priority for Energy Efficiency, which John Swinney first agreed to more than six months ago after pressure from Alison Johnson, will hopefully lead to some good work, work which Greens have been calling for for more than a dozen years. But isn't that the story of this whole scenario? We're seeing only question, after four Mr. failed Harvey. targets. I'm asking a question. Only Get after fa four failed targets, we're seeing action beginning to happen and a few pilot exercises on transport when we already know what has to be done. Minister. No, actually, the story is actually that Scotland has reduced our emissions by 38.4%. And that is a significant progress that we are making in terms of our long-term target. We are more than three quarters of the way towards achieving our 42% target in reducing greenhouse gas emissions by 2020 and I think that's something that actually we should celebrate in terms of this amazing progress that has been made not just by you know this parliament and this government but actually by the people of Scotland. David Stewart followed by Michael Russell. Thank you, President Officer. Does the Minister share my view that decarbonising freight transport will help the Scottish Government meet future climate change targets? We need more freight off-road onto sea and rail. Does the Minister agree? Minister. Uh, yes, I do. <laughs> Thank you. The Scottish Government is committed to rail electrification, recognising the key benefits that it brings in terms of improved journey times and connectivity, the environmental benefits and reduced industry costs, particularly on that intercity network, including the north of Perth to Inverness and the central belt to Aberdeen. Michael Russell, followed by Michael McMahon. Uh, presiding officer, can I ask the Minister, how we make this personal for each citizen of Scotland. She's mentioned the people of Scotland several times in her statement, but it's only the people of Scotland who in the end will take the steps on transport and heating that will make the difference. Tremendous progress has been made. How do we make this a personal priority for every single person in this country? Minister. Uh, can I thank uh, Mr Russell for that question? Because we know that government election uh, alone cannot meet the ambitious targets that have been agreed 
by this Parliament. And therefore, you know, we continue to work with a range of audiences to put in place the information and resources that will enable change to take place. So we are working with, we are supporting a wide range of partners to drive forward a coherent package of interventions to deliver that shift that we need to see in our low carbon behaviours. And that includes our Greener Together engagement with the general public and working with established networks such as Eco Schools, Young Scott, Eco Congregations, the 2020 Climate Group, the Sustainable Scotland Network and through the Climate Challenge Fund. Michael McMahon, followed by John Finney. Thank you. Can the Minister tell us if she believes that anyone should be surprised that when she tells us today that only now will she be working with energy experts, businesses and communities on housing emissions in preparation for the third report on proposals and policies, her government will fail to meet its legally binding commitment to eradicate fuel poverty by 2016? Does she accept that this is far too little, much too late? Minister. Well, can I say to the member that... You know, work is already underway in, in terms of how we uh, deal with fuel poverty. I mean, since 2009, over half a billion pounds has been spent by this government in how we address fuel poverty and our energy efficiency measures. Of course, there is more for us always still to do, but we are making significant progress in how we deal with our fuel poverty. John Finney, then finally, Alec Ferguson. Thank you. Minister, after four failures, will the Scottish Government now go ahead with the deposit refund scheme rather than wait to do anything with the rest of the UK? Lead by example. Minister. Uh, we are considering this in relation to the Zero Waste Scotland study. Mr Ferguson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. The Minister's statement mentions the role that agriculture has to play in reducing carbon emissions, and it speaks of the intensity of emissions from the agricultural sector. Uh, but my question is, how can any reductions in those emissions be measured when no baseline has ever been set? Minister, your answer can be a bit longer. You've got till 4.58. Uh, we are measuring the nitrogen oxide in terms of our uh, agricultural emissions. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we'll go, now move swiftly on to the next item of business. It is consideration of motion number 13384 in the name of Liam MacArthur on the appointment of a member of the Standards Commission for Scotland 